Cats are wonderful house pets. They're like dogs except they walk themselves and they fit in backpacks. Now I must admit there are dogs that fit in backpacks too but almost unanimously unless the cat is overweight they'll fit in your backpack. They can be swines though. They can bring in dubious gifts. A distended sparrow. A half-chewed mole. The odd dismembered vicar. And of course mice. Lots of mice. It is this everyday rodent struggle that forms the basis of Tom and Jerry, one of the world's most beloved cartoons. It was William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, that pairing, that gave us so many classic characters from Yogi Bear to Scooby-Doo to Top Cat that first gave us the antagonist pairing of House Cat Tom and Mouse Jerry. I've done a review of some of those previous animated shows in another video which you can look up there. It was as far back as 1940 that the original shorts were produced, winning Academy Awards during the initial run between 1940 and 1958, tying with Walt Disney's Silly Symphonies with seven gongs apiece for short movies of an animated nature. A huge hit for MGM until the cartoon studio closed for a short period of time, causing Hannah and Barbera to leave and go and make all those other series with animated talking animals that I've already discussed, as well as stuff like The Jetsons and The Flintstones. Tom and Jerry has continued in various forms since, all the way to 2014, with episodes being repeated many times on Western television channels and becoming a staple of many a generational childhood. It's a simple tale of slapstick conflict, with the two mute leads finding inventive ways in which to hurt each other. OK, mainly Tom. The series has amassed 164 episodes, and really, who doesn't like Tom and Jerry? I don't know, I suppose the Nazis, um, slow chimps, maybe? There's not many other people that don't. If you don't like Tom and Jerry, you're one of those two things, a Nazi or a slow chimp or both. It was developer Magic Bytes from Germany that were the first to secure the game rights for Tom and Jerry from MGM in 1989, no doubt slapping away the grasping mitts of the likelier high-tech alternative or ocean with a wooden ruler. In the later part of the year, Magic Bytes, who developed the game in-house, released Tom and Jerry 2 for the Amiga, the Atari ST, the Amstrad CPC, the Commodore 64 and the Spectrum. But what about Tom and Jerry 1? Well, there isn't one. At least, not for the Spectrum. The only evidence of a Spectrum game that exists called just Tom and Jerry is the Spanish re-release of the game by Herb Software a couple of years later. So Tom and Jerry 2 came out before Tom and Jerry 1. This is a crime against chronology. So what gives? Well, Tom and Jerry 1, the proper one, does exist, just not on Sir Clive's machine. Tom and Jerry Hunting High and Low is Tom and Jerry 1, it's by Magic Bytes, and it was released in the US and in Europe on the Amiga, the Atari ST and the Commodore 64. Here is the game running on the Atari ST. Now, it looks kind of similar to the Spectrum one, doesn't it? Other than the graphics enjoying that 16-bit beef-up, there's clearly a striking similarity between the Atari ST version of Tom & Jerry 1 and Tom & Jerry 2 on the Spectrum, to the point of being near identical. Other than the little mix-up between the words lose and loose, of course. In fact, the game was re-released later on in the year, the crafty Magic Bite Swine Huns making a few minor tweaks to the environment and the graphics and just called the game Tom and Jerry 2, which is when the Amstrad MSX and Spectrum games called Tom and Jerry 2 came out. So Tom and Jerry 1 came out on the Spectrum after 2, but 1 came out on the other formats first. But it doesn't matter because Spectrum Tom and Jerry 1 is the same game as Tom and Jerry 2, which is the same game as Tom and Jerry 1 that came out before either of them and they're all the same anyway clear no me neither um, so how is the game 
in a word, ropey. Remember, 1989 is well into the latter half of the Spectrum's lifespan at this point, and Tom and Jerry 2 looks like this. It only has a 48K mode, and it's a buggy, colour-clashing uggo of a port. You are Jerry, and you must evade the tabby terror Tom as you scour the homestead for lumps of gouda that the owners have left up on high shelves appliances and tables for some reason that escapes all conceivable logic known to man. Jerry leaps with the agile heft of an excitable flea as he traverses the furniture laden rooms on his hunt for fromage. Unusually for a spectrum platformer you can steer him mid jump which is absolutely necessary in the closed confides of some of the high rise ottomans and presentation shelves. Despite this, it is still a pig to get the little fella to manoeuvre his way around. It does lend the game a weird proto-survival horror aspect as you wrestle your way around a low table as Tom approaches. Though, instead of yelling in suspenseful fear, you'll be calling out the greatest hits of your favourite cuss words and swears at the coffee table that blocks your way. If Tom catches you, he sort of leaps like a shark, more open straight at the ground, which looks painful to me for both cat and mouse. But rather than ever end your life, you are inconvenienced by 30 in-game minutes. There's a time limit, you see, though I'm not exactly sure what the storyline reason is for a time limit. It's just collecting cheese. If you do know, tell me in the comments or make something up and I'll gullibly believe you, probably, because it's probably better than whatever story they've come up for it. To move around the house, you can run through mice holes where you get this rather seizier summoning tunnel sequence. Here, much like the rest of the game, you have to collect cheese chunks while avoiding mouse traps and explosives that Tom has deemed suitable to stuff in the skirting boards of the family abode. I'm not sure how many cheese segments you need to get to complete the game, as there's no on-screen indicator and the chunks regenerate anyway if you re-enter a room via a mouse tunnel. I can't tell you if the game even has an end. The game is unquestionably a complete mess. Due to the low distribution of the game, there doesn't appear to be a lot of information about it anywhere, or at least the Spectrum port of it, though the low scores of the original release on the Commodore and Atari formats seem to indicate that the game wasn't really a critical success on any level. And it goes without doubt that that quality is mirrored in the Spectrum version. Maybe it's even worse. I don't think that either your Sinclair, Sinclair user or Crash would have gone any easier on it than some of these Commodore or Atari magazines. Magic Bytes would also go on to make a game based on the Pink Panther, releasing 32 games in total over its existence, mainly on the 16-bit computers and PC, until they closed doors in 2000. They did, however, relaunch in 2017 via original founder Thomas Meyer Torberins. Christ, I hope I got that right. Uh, deciding that he wanted to reuse the name for his new VR venture. Hopefully for him, his work in the VR realm will prove to be a lot more successful than his efforts at MGM slapstick cartoons and simple number sequencing. My... This game was a right frying pan to the face. Okay, thanks. Bye.